My name is Corey Grenier. I'm the CEO co-founder of Genie, and this is my engineering co-founder. Uh, Evgeny Peshkov, CTO of Genie. Thank you. Leaving stage to you. We'll return in a couple of minutes. Uh, we're going to speak about the power of web AI to personalize paid media. And what you'll see is that we're taking a lot of the technologies that were incubated by the people in this room to the commercial markets. It's all real-time web-based AR ads. Um, I've seen many different computing eras over the last 20 years. And some of you may recognize um, some famous business leaders up here. Um, probably the most famous is Mike Judge, uh, creator of Silicon Valley, who's standing right next to Evan Spiegel, and Jason Mays, um, the uh, web AI lead and TensorFlow advocate. Um, but uh, over, over the course, of, I've worked on many different uh, devices, including shipping some of the first um, Android devices at Lenovo China, um, later developing in, in my hometown of Sunnyvale, uh, where I'm from, um, AR, AR glasses that was acquired by Snapchat, and I led the development of the AR Spectacles team. Um, but Eugenie and I really wanted uh, to take the power of um, web through what we saw as the most ubiquitous and accessible medium, the browser. Uh, we think that the web browser is uh, the universal operating system of the future, um, and that the power of personalization could be um, promulgated faster. We heard five billion um, Chrome users today. I mean, I've worked at Snap, and that's a, that's a lot more users. Um, the, the other aspect is the medium we chose was ads. Uh, I think Google made the same decision. And uh, there's 13 million ads served every second, but most of them are flat. They're photos, they're videos, and the power of the technology today is that they can be um, web AI enabled to have personalized web AR experiences in real time. So I'm going to show what that looks like. Uh, this is an actual example. Anybody can open up on their phone today or a desktop or a tablet. And our ads, you tap and you instantly try on. Um, this ad in particular, we just served to 20 million people in the last 30 days. Using the power of the body tracking that we've developed and some of you have contributed to, um, we track and display um, from handbag to hats to earrings, rings, watches, soft good apparel, uh, <laughs> bracelets. Um, and <laughs> uh, so we believe that every body matters, the human body. Um, our technology can be used for a lot of things, but we choose to track the body and um, turn that into immersive personalized ads. Um, as I said, the world is still flat. 98% uh, of websites don't have virtual try-on. Virtual no ads have virtual try-on unless it's genie enabled. Um, and what we are an AI-first platform because one of the biggest barriers of creating high-speed high um, programmatic ads is the development of 3D models, um, and the same for, for e-commerce. We, we serve a small um, shopping app called Xi'an today. Anybody ever hear of it? Uh, and, and just the development of those models um, is, is very laborious. And so the generative um, nature of 3D is going to make platforms like ours and through the web even more powerful. So this is kind of a roundup that we make uh, programmatic ads personalized. Um, also, ad media screens, like at malls and kiosks. I'll show about that. And then often, when we run an ad, the clients say, could you put this on our website? And it's 10 lines of code. And it's through the web. It's very fast. And so we, we're, we're touching consumers um, at multiple um, touch points. It's, the web is universal. It works on any screen size. And let's talk about the data. So um, in the category of apparel, a click-through rate is typically 0.4. The web AR ads we're doing are 0.7. They're 75% more performant, three times the engagement time than a video ad. And this is the best part. The median time within the ad, with, with data set of just the last ad, 20 million that we ran, 31 seconds. Why? There's eight SKUs, and we all like to look in the mirror. So play video? OK. Um, this is, this is more examples. This is hand tracking for handbags. Um, we're just trying to show in real time that's through the web what you just saw. 
Uh, this is body tracking with a Coca-Cola bear. <laughs> this is real time through the web, applying a branded um, uh, character on top of a video. And it's great for product placement, too, if you have pre-existing video. Um, this, is, this is a mall. Um, those screens have never been activated in 10 years, even though they had a camera, until the power of web AI. So for the first time, you can go to Westfield malls, and you can experience these for real. I was really inspired by some of the development that we saw from Charlie showing what could be. And we're taking that vision that she was doing back in 2019 and applying it to real devices. This is our own personal media device that we created running on the web, right? Take, taking any form factor because of the power of the technology. So how do we reach a billion people? It's very simple. We leverage the existing platforms and infrastructure that already exist. The browser is serving 5 billion people just with Chrome alone and apply the easy to use APIs and web AI, web AR tools that we've been talking about all day today. Um, so, so now I want to turn it over to Yugini Peshkov, the CTO who developed all the technology and body tracking, original neural networks to make this possible. Thank you. Thank you, Corey. Uh, pleasure to be here. A lot of very interesting projects. Uh, sorry. OK. Uh, great <laughs> introduction for my part. A uh, couple of words. Uh, about myself, more than 15 years, maybe now it's 20 years working in the fields of robotics, computer vision, machine learning, uh, a lot of R&D, math, geometry, and uh, let's start from what applications of web AR are or what these next generation media formats we are talking about. One of them, it's virtual try -on that really transforms uh, how we are experiencing shopping and uh, the overall uh, e-commerce experience. Uh, this is really engaging because you can instantly try uh, anything, any apparel, any accessory, bags, bag, bags watches, uh, anything, and then make more thoughtful uh, purchase decision. Uh, quite related to this, it's uh, air ads, new format of ads where instead of just showing pictures and videos of the product, we are allowing users on their favorite uh, publisher platform uh, to try things and make purchase if they like the product. Uh, in other applications, it's uh, air games and uh, that use pose tracking, pose our body as a controller and uh, bring you into AR settings. Uh, quite interesting things is application of web AR in education. We are, for example, uh, putting our AR meters into museums and their children can get all the information in an engaging, gamified and very memorable way. And recently we started working with uh, on AR trailers, where instead of showing parts of the movie, cuts of the movie, uh, we are bringing users uh, into movie setting, uh, showing them the vibe into, of the movie and then allowing them uh, to have a full experience into cinemas. So what are fundamentals of WebAR or uh, let's call it a theoretical basis of WebAR? It's of course AI and neural networks for post detection, uh, segmentation and painting. Then there is a lot of video and image post-processing, filtering, pre-processing, every kinds of processing, a lot of math, geometry optimization methods, both liner and non-liner. And uh, of course, a big part is realistic 3D rendering. Uh, that includes ray tracing, uh, physical-based rendering, rendering of different materials, rendering pipelines, and so on and so forth. Uh, building blocks of WebAR or more practical part is key point detection, 3D reconstruction of uh, body shape, segmentation, again, uh, in painting, pixel level analysis, statical modeling of human body and its behaviors, its kinematics, forward and inverse kinematics. Uh, estimation of illumination is very important for realistic rendering and to provide high fidelity of experiences. And quite interesting things are physics simulation and especially close simulation to provide high fidelity of virtual try-on of apparel and other soft goods. Uh, 
web AR needs to perform on the edge. Uh, by this, we mean that every pixel matters. Uh, achieving high, fide high fidelity of virtual try-on requires high accuracy uh, on every stage of the pipeline, starting from key point detection through post-processing and filtering towards realistic rendering that utilizes all like, modern approaches. Uh, and every millisecond matters. This means that virtual try-on and uh, web AR, it's real-time applications with low latency and High fidelity virtual try on air games are possible only if we are trying to save every CPU and GPU cycle we can again on every stage of the pipeline using like highly efficient but still accurate methods. Uh, in our opinion, browsers became uh, the whole operating system and universal channel of delivery content to users. Uh, we have a lot of uh, technologies we have in the browsers, a lot of APIs we can play any media, access camera, devices, audio. And uh, here you can see that we actually use the technologies we actively use in our daily development and engineering, WebGPU, WebGL, upcoming WebNN, uh, WebAssembly, web workers, and so on and so forth, everything uh, to save CPU and GPU cycles. Uh, Technological solutions we've developed uh, to fulfill needs of web AR of high fidelity and high performance. Uh, custom neural networks that utilize web GPU and web GL uh, for high speed inference, thanks to TensorFlow.js team <laughs> for providing us with great inference engine. Uh, web GPU we use a lot in it opens a lot of possibilities both in inference of neural network and uh, custom layers and rendering. WebNN is actually a next big leap. We actually tried it and it provides like really great performance. I won't say exact numbers, but it's like several times better performance even on CPU. So what's really important uh, to maintain high performance of all the solutions is to minimize memory transfers between CPU and GPU, so we prefer to make all post-processings in tensors, not leaving GPU space, not leaving GPU memory, again, to save several CPU and GPU cycles. Uh, we also utilize several GPU contexts to like distribute computation between devices and contexts and develop lightweight uh, but still accurate methods and use compact but performant neural networks uh, so where is the power of web AI? Uh, still, our pipeline, computational pipeline is big. Uh, from neural networks towards rendering, but still inference of neural networks takes up to 75%, sometimes even 85% of the time we have per frame, and this is just milliseconds. So increasing inference speed by only 30% will give us room for twice more time for the rest of the pipeline and more advanced rendering techniques. Uh, closer to native computational performance that utilize inference of graph models on GPUs, NPUs, CPUs, heterogeneous approach in general uh, will allow us to use more performant, uh, bigger neural networks uh, in real-time applications and give us, again, more room for rendering. Uh, and uh, the best part of all of this is uh, that client-side computations uh, resolve all questions and all concerns about privacy of user data because no one wants their camera images, images from their camera to be sent to some cloud, be stored somewhere, then you get back results. And client-side uh, computations resolve all these concerns. So, uh, so. This is uh, how web AI will deliver next generation paid media formats and new ways for users to interact with content and uh, web. Mm -hmm.